So I just replayed Colors Ultimate, and I gotta say, I think I'm now legally blind, because good god that game's bloom damn near gave me a seizure. You're telling me! Never in my life have I seen a worse quote on quote Ultimate Edition than that bum ass remaster! Aw, oh, come on, boys! I don't think it's all that bad! At the end of the day, it's still Sonic Colors, and while it ain't no DS version, I think it's pretty good still. It just confuses me on how they took a pretty good game overall and thought it needed a huge lighting overhaul. Wii Colors still holds up TBH. Yeah, I like it too. It's crazy that it's switched up on being good and bad all the time, more than any other Sonic game, really. I think it's fine, but definitely not the best Boost Era game. It's got too many 2D sections and not a lot to make it really stand out. What you mean, Knucklehead? Colors stands out fine on its own. It's not like it's forgotten or anything. Yeah, but think about it, Blue Bitch. Actually die. Unleashed is known for the peak boost stages and Werehog. Generations is known for bringing back all of Sonic history as well as classic Sonic. And Forces is known for being a shitty, rushed, downright embarrassment of a game. What about colors, huh? Well, that's easy. It, uh, it gave us the wisps. Yeah, those little guys are basically an integral part of the Sonic canon now. Saying it didn't introduce important aspects is flat out wrong. But Tails, buddy, I was asking a serious question there. What? Am I wrong? They literally still appear to this day. No, they shouldn't even be here still, man. It was said that they're aliens native to the planets they came from. But Sega just forgot about that and now puts them wherever the fuck they feel like. Well, forgetting about Sega's corporate bullshit for a few seconds, I do think the Wisps are a pretty neat addition to the universe. They make me do some weird shit on God. Oh no, please don't tell me that you get high on Wisp power-ups too. For the love of chaos, no, the hell I don't. I'm putting that shit behind me and those power-ups aren't even super forms, you asshole. Just checking, man! Well, I like those cute little guys too! And with that said, because y'all have already read the video title, nice fourth wall I break. think it's tier list time, baby. Well, that's a little lame of an idea, but I guess I can stick around. Well, at least there ain't no super knuckles to put in B tier to make you run off again like a pussy. Hey, I haven't used my fists in a while, and your blue skull would shake the rust off damn good. Easy there, fellas. Let's just rank some aliens without breaking any skulls. Also, real quickly, just wanted to thank you guys for all the recent support. We're about to hit 35,000 subs on the channel at the time of recording this, and that's pretty damn awesome. The Knucklehead Nation only grows by the day. Soon, my army will be able to storm Sega headquarters and force them to give me a new game. <laughs> For fuck's sake, please don't do that. You know how crazy the fan base can get, so don't encourage them. Can't make any promises, zesty boy. Anyways. I found the Wisp tier list, and for the record, the only Wisp type not on the list is the White Wisp, since those homies just give boost. I hope the Chad Yacker is doing good wherever he is. All right, enough pre-tier list banter. Let's get this show on the road. Well, first up on the list is the Cyan Wisp, which give the Cyan laser power up. These dudes are pretty cool because they just make me go crazy fast. Why does bro always look so pissed though? Little dude deadass needs a Snickers bar. Too bad a lot of the segments and colors with them are automated and you kind of just bounce around these prism-like things. They do act as a pretty cool beam attack in Team Sonic Racing though. Yeah, they are kind of the introductory for Wisp power-ups, so they kind of had to be basic all things considered. I think simple to start is pretty good to be honest. Cyan might not be the most interesting, but it ain't bad. Then I guess a B tier or an A tier would go good to start off. There's definitely better shit though. I'll give them a good ass A tier to start it off. Second on the list is the Yellow Wisp, which gives the Yellow Drill. Yet again, another solid ass power. I mean, hey, as a yellowy orangish creature myself, I gotta have a bit of a bias on this cool. Thing. Also, before I forget to mention, these guys are an absolute fucking godsend when in the water. I've never moved so fluently until then. Damn, by the way, you got so hyped there. It must have been a pretty good solution to that pesky liquid that slows us down. But, uh, not a crazy design, though. That's the only thing holding it back from S tier for me. Fair enough. I say another A tier for the yellow boy. Seems about right. Next up is the orange wisp, which turns you into a cool ass rocket. This guy also made a pretty based return in Generations, which was a crazy flex. I mean, hey, as a yellowy orangish creature myself, I gotta have a bit of a bias on this cool dude. Hey, you said that twice now! Don't know what you're smoking, Nux. But, but as cool as these orange guys are, it kinda stinks that the rocket can only go straight up and not in all directions like the drill. That's fair, and their design is pretty simple, all things considered. Also, it, uh, it's a bit too phallic for me, all things considered. Good fucking god, Nux. But yeah, I hear you too when it comes to the actual ability, so I'll give the Orange Wisp a B tier. 
Next is the Pink Wisp, who was the other wisp to come back in generations. Oh yeah, this guy turns you into a spiky ball. Not gonna lie, I never really liked controlling you in this form. It kind of messed with my brain. Honestly, I can relate. It was a little weird to get used to sticking to literally every wall to the point where I'd sometimes accidentally spin dash off the edge in colors. He looks pretty all right, though. Yeah, the boy is pissed and ready to throw down. And I'm all for it. Yeah, kind of just rolling around at the speed of a moderate pace with this guy. Pink Wisp can go in C tier, I guess. Next up is the Green Wisp, which literally just lets you hover. Imagine not being able to fly. Seriously, imagine using your legs to travel when you can just go in the air and save a step or two. On God, couldn't be me. For real. Yeah, yeah, keep talking, Chuckle Fox. This green dude was pretty good sometimes, but his problem is that he's slow as fuck and doesn't give a lot of mobility in the air. Only if there was a large-ass trail of rings would this guy pick up the pace and go at a decent speed. Still not enough, though. Also, the design is fine, but nothing special. In fact, I'd say this is one of the most boring Wisp designs, despite the simplicity. Yeah, I can see that. I'll just give another C-tier for the green goober. Next is the Wisp with the best overall color without any debate. The Blue Wisp. Hey, it's the moment when Minecraft finally came to our world. Let's get it, gamers. Despite the cap on this wisp being the best color, hey. I can say that it was a bit nicer to use than the previous two we just ranked. Yeah, this was a pretty neat way to collect some red rings and cause some mass destruction with a single use. That combined with a design that's pretty cut and clean gives this cube boy a solid B tier. Okay, what's up next then? Oh, hey, it's the new. Don't say it, whoa, Nux. Whoa, Think watch about the monetization. What you're saying, knucklehead. Ooh, right, right. Uh, the, uh, the N-Wisp was pretty cool, all things considered. Yeah, I still don't trust saying that word it's way too close, but I definitely agree that this Wisp is fucking badass. You can grow massive if you eat enough bullshit. Yeah, and the actual transform design is super sick. It looks like a big, badass ghost shark thingy. Whatever it is, it's cool as hell. I still don't get why they didn't just call it the purple wisp. I think it might have some kind of wordplay on the word negative, so a negative wisp. But whatever, it's fine. This cool-ass spooky dude gets a certified S-tier for Aura alone. And now we're gonna leave the realm of wisps that originated from Sonic Colors. Next up is the Crimson Wisp who originated from Lost World. Okay, not only does Bro have the best color, but flying around as the eagle form with the Wii U gamepad was surprisingly smooth. He ain't too bad on the PC version either. Yeah, the design is pretty sleek, and the little mid-air dash attack that you can do gives it a couple points too. I don't think it's quite as good as the purple wisp though. Fair enough. Even though I think wisps being in Lost World is fucking stupid, this guy is pretty cool and gets a certified A tier. Next up is another Lost Worlder, the Indigo Asteroid Wisp. Okay, I get the appeal for this guy, but Lord, I may be slightly unintelligent sometimes, but I'm not that brain dead. Yeah, for the console version of Lost World, this dude was fine and kind of cool when absorbing specific things, but in 3DS Lost World, and especially Forces, this dude is just broken and collects everything just by running into it. I like the design, though. It kind of felt like Sega was getting a little more creative with the Wisp designs as time went on. Fair enough, I guess. I'll throw Indigo and B tier, bro. Just so this tier list ain't too slow. Next to go is the Bro Magenta, yo. What? Uh, that aside, I think this Wisp is kind of shitty, all things considered. The constant bouncing around and flipping up and down as the note wasn't very fun or consistent feeling. Why the hell does bro turn into a music note of all things? That's just kind of stupid, not gonna lie. Yeah, some of the powers from here on out either feel kind of pointless or flat out bad. And this is one of them. The Magenta Wisp gets the first D tier of the list. Okay, can somebody please tell me what the hell the color ivory is and why the hell Sega thought it would be a good color for lightning? I mean, they already used up blue and yellow, so... I guess they were running out of options, question mark? Other than that, the ivory wisp is kind of meh. It was way too slow in Lost World 3DS. Yeah, if they were trying to get that mid-game sold on a handheld by making up extra wisps, then I don't know what to say to that shit. Also, the ivory whatever dude was pretty mid in TSR, and forces made it just a whip. A wisp whip, if you will. Yeah, this wisp is pretty mid, but I don't think it's quite as bad as the magenta wisp, so it'll go in C tier. Next wisp is the Grey Quake Wisp, which was another Lost World 3DS originator. Somebody please keep track of how many times we say wisp. I need to know for science and shit. Man, this just further made Lost World look like a Mario Galaxy wannabe. I mean, this literally was just those rolling ball segments in those way better games. And to top it all off, the dude's power is hard to control. 
and he only appeared in TSR and nothing else since? Rest in pieces, Rockman. Also, the design is just stone. So yeah, D-tier. D-tier it is then. All right, we're down to four wisps left. Next up on the list is the Red Burst Wisp, who originated from Colors DS. Okay, that's definitely orange. Ain't no way I'm colorblind. But this was honestly a pretty cool wisp power overall. It gave good mobility in the games it showed up in, and wasn't fucking slow for once. Yeah, this guy showed up quite a bit too. He was in both Generations 3DS and Lost World 3DS, as well as Forces and TSR. The only minor setback is that the design is a little more generic than the other new Wisps. Sure, I'll just throw the boy in S tier since it's getting a little empty in there. Now we're on to the Black Wisp, which has the Black Bomb power. Okay, completely unrelated, but this dude has the best Wisp theme hands down. That banjo goes fucking hard while you're rolling around. Unfortunately, that's like the only good thing about this one outside of its pretty good design. The bomb moves so freaking slow, and the fact that the explosion radius isn't that big, on top of having to time it, makes it arguably the worst wisp power in the series. Yeah, I gotta agree with all that. It's real impractical, and on top of all that, it only appeared in Lost World and TSR. There's really nothing much going for this bomber outside of non-game related things. Okay, now we're moving on to the Violet Wisp, which is another variant of the, you know, that wisp. Pretty sure it was first playable in Colors DS. Yep, that's right, little buddy. Honestly, though, this one is kind of just the precursor to the Indigo Wisp since it's just another big mass that sucks up rings and shit. It has a fire design, though, and that big scary face ball of death in Colors DS is pretty badass, too. It's neat to get wisps that are definitely doing devious deeds dastardly. Sure, that gives it a leg up. We'll give it a good ass A tier then. All right, the last wisp on the list is the Jade Wisp which first appeared in TSR and later became a Wisp exclusive to Colors Ultimate. Dude, this was a lame as hell selling point. It's literally just a no-clip tool and nothing more. The design isn't even that interesting. It's literally just a big green booger. Yeah, there could have been some cool ass Wisps added in to make Colors Ultimate a little more definitive, but this honestly felt pretty lazy. It ain't the worst Wisp in the world, but it ain't no standout either. I agree, pretty much the same, fellas. Lame-ass remaster with a lame-ass Wisp. C tier for the Jade Wisp, and that's a wrap. Honestly, despite everything, I don't think these guys are a bad gimmick to the franchise. I just feel like they're a little overdone nowadays. Yeah, they really should have been more exclusive to make them feel more special. If that was the case, then it would be a lot cooler when new species of wisps are introduced. Hey, all they need to do to improve that shit is make a boxing wisp and give it to me. Literally peak fiction, ladies and gents. All right, whatever you say, knucklehead. I'm gonna head over to the gaming room now so we can set up the finishing touches. You coming, Tails? Yep, I'll be there in a few minutes, big bro. Whoa, wait, wait, hold the phone. You guys didn't tell me that shit was almost done. Oh, uh, yeah, Nux. We're gonna be doing some in-person stuff soon back at HQ. You wanna come down? You bet your asses I'm coming down. I'll be right there. Knucklehead out. Guess there's no time like the present. Up, up, and away. Wait, shit, who the hell's gonna watch my emerald? And here's a shout out to our loyal members, Steven Hafner, Just Johns, Attila Kurtilic, Glumpum, SonicFan5340, Switch, Accordion Yggdrasil, Cody Lewis, Ayats Octoboy YT, Ellie and Joel Forever, Neo, Ace Asterio, Jazon Nanos, Mr. Megamat X, The Big Goobers, Kiri Atazoa, Brian RP7, Random Sonic Connor, Kavion Matthews the Crisp, Glitch Ninja Moon, Just Some Guy 420, Aiden Lamont Productions, Fire Sky 15, Shade Enigma, TO6, Awkward Info, Bear 295, Bendy and the Meme Machine, Keith, Tudor Manguta, King Johnny TH 445, Matamatus 8503, D4C H34T, Yoshi Voris 25, Juan CL, FFCM 15, Raquel Gomez, Money Dynamic Matanya, and finally Uzuka Scarlaboshi. Stay tuned and have a good day, everyone.